All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, go through the logic to set up a scoreboard system. Uh, what the scoreboard system will do, it will, when a new player joins the game, it will update the scoreboard to reflect their name and their score, which is starting at zero. If they leave the game, it will remove them from the scoreboard. Uh, what's great is it will use an event system similar to what we looked at with the avatar, so that it won't, ha won't have to run an update method to analyze if the player left or joined the game. Uh, also, when a player does score, it will automatically update uh, the scoreboard to reflect their new score. If you're comfortable creating the model script and the real-time component script yourself, you can go ahead and skip this video. But make sure when you create the model script that you create the variable within that uh, for the scoreboard text as a variable type string. So let's go ahead and get this started here. So we're going to create a couple of new scripts. And some of this we're already familiar with working with the uh, player data. So we're going to go ahead and create a player, or sorry, a scoreboard model script. Let's go ahead and create a new script. I'll call the scoreboard model. And all we're going to need to do in here is create one variable, similar to what we've done with the player data model. So we'll just run through this quickly here. So we don't need any of these methods. And since this is a custom kind of script, we don't need it to inherit from the model behavior, so we'll get rid of that. But we do need to add in a library for the Unity, uh, not sorry, Unity, normal dot real time dot serialization. And just above this class, like we did with the player data model, we're going to add this definer here. We're going to call this real time model. And we're going to add one property. Uh, it's going to be a string. So we're going to go ahead and do private. Uh, string, uh, we'll call this scoreboard text. And because this is a, a, a parameter within the uh, real-time system, we need to add in the real-time property. And those three pr uh, parameters, again, unit ID, or sorry, property ID, um, since there's only one property in here, it can be one. Reliable is, again, if we want it to be reliable, uh, or unreliable. Um, we're going to go ahead and set this to be reliable. And we do want it to, to create a did change event because it's going to um, allow us to tap into that event system. Uh, what we'll, we'll do in a little bit here. So we'll say this is true. All right, so that's all that we need to do for this uh, model script. So let's go ahead and save that. Pop back into Unity. We'll give it a second to compile. And let's compile our model. All right. Uh, we're going to go ahead and create another script. This will be our scoreboard script. And we'll pop in there. Some of the what we've done with the player data script will be similar. There will be some variations that we'll take a look at here, and we'll talk about what those variations are. So let's go ahead and get rid of these methods again. And because we will be working with the uh, Canvas, the UI system, we do need to add in a library to allow us to access some of those um, components. And we do need to add in for normal uh, real time. And just like we did when we set up a real time component script uh, for the player data, we're going to have this not be inherited from the mono behavior, but have this inherit from a uh, real-time component. So we're going to add in a couple of uh, uh, variables here, similar to what we did before. So we're going to add a variable to reference our scoreboard model. And we'll call that underscore model. We are going to also create a public variable um, to access our avatar manager. So it will be of type real time avatar manager. And I'll just call this uh, underscore avatar manager. What the avatar manager does is it's basically a, a dictionary, a real time dictionary, which is similar to an array. Every time a player 
uh, joins or leaves the uh, room, uh, it updates this dictionary. So if a player or one player joins the room, it'll create an a index in that dictionary at element or index zero. If another player joins, it will create an index for the avatar at index one and so forth. This is how we're going to be able to access, um, drill down and access the score of each avatar. Because uh, remember, in our last video, we created the, um, the score tracking system was attached to each avatar. And so we'll need to be able to drill down to each avatar to update the score and to retrieve the score. We're going to also create another uh, variable to access the scoreboard text. So this will be a private variable of type text. And we'll just call this underscore scoreboard text. So we want to create the actual, so we're, we've initialized it here, but we want to actually create the reference to this. So we're going to, uh, in our void, or sorry, our, our wake method, we'll just create a reference to the actual text element. So this, this script will go on the text game object within our, for our scoreboard. So we can, again, just go get component text. So again, similar to what we did um, with the player data model, we're going to create um, a property which will allow us to, because right now this scoreboard model is set to private, the property using a set accessor will allow us to be able to set some of the very um, information within that um, variable. So I'm going to go ahead oh, outside this method here. Scoreboard model model. And we'll use set. All right, we'll uh, put an if statement in here like we did with the player data model. So if underscore model does not equal null, we'll, we're going to unregister this from the events. We'll scoreboard text to change. And we'll, this will go minus equals. And we're going to put a method in here that doesn't exist yet, but we'll add that in a sec. I will do scoreboard did change. Uh, let's come back to this um, property and this accessor in a sec. Let's go ahead and create that method scoreboard did change. And since it is. Um, Again, kind of connecting it to this uh, event from within norm core, we do need to pass it a couple of properties. The one property we need to pass is scoreboard model. The variable that we are working within the uh, scoreboard model is a string. So unlike when we did the player data model and the player data script, uh, we're going to create this as a string. And all we're going to do in here is similar to what we did with the player data model. We're going to just call another method, update scoreboard text. We have to go ahead and create that method right now, which we'll do. So far, what we've been going through is exactly the same process um, and logic as the player data model. We will throw in a couple of unique pieces we need for this uh, scoreboard script. Let's go ahead and create this method here. We don't need to pass any parameters to this method. All right, and what we're going to put in here, uh, we're going to go ahead and go reference our scoreboard text variable. Dot text equals underscore model dot scoreboard text. Let's go ahead and save that. Now, so far, like I said, everything we've done is very similar to the player data model. Let's finish out the the accessor within this property here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just after this if statement, we're going to go underscore model equals value. And then we'll do a couple other if statements that we uh, need in here. So again, we'll go if underscore model does not equal null.
we'll go ahead and call the method update scoreboard this or scoreboard text and we'll also register it for events we'll go model underscore model dot scoreboard text to change plus equals scoreboard to change All right, let's go ahead and save that. In the next video, uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the new logic that we'll be adding into this script that will allow us to be able to have um, the script fire when a new player joins or leaves the game, as well as kind of accessing their score um, from within each individual avatar.